tax season is here. So today, we're covering what HR parties of one need to know. I'm your host, Ryan McCoslin, and it's my job to help you understand and demystify human resources stuff facing small and medium-sized employers. And I know about this stuff because I happen to be an HR party of one. My employer, Bernie Portal, is bringing you this show based on our experience serving thousands of employers and their HR parties of one, or sometimes two or three, through our all-in-one HRIS, Bernie Portal. I've had a first row seat observing HR parties of one in action, and I've studied this deeply to tease out what works. Welcome to HR Party of One. Let's jump right into it. At a basic level, an employer's tax responsibilities include, number one, withholding an employee's contributions for Social Security and Medicare taxes, known as FICA taxes, as well as federal and state income taxes. Number two, paying employer contributions for FICA taxes. And number three, paying other employer business taxes. So we're going to dig into all of these responsibilities in a minute. But first, how did employers wind up responsible for employee withholdings in the first place? Well, it's timeline time, where we give you a quick shot of history and it's sometimes crazy events that lead us to where HR is today. Income taxes were first implemented in the US through the Revenue Act of 1862, which also created the Bureau of Internal Revenue, an IRS predecessor. Income taxes weren't renewed in 1872, but there was increased support for an income tax in the early 20th century. The 16th Amendment of 1913 granted Congress the power to collect income tax. Now, not many people paid income tax at that time, but in 1940, tax obligations increased to fund the war. And this is when the Treasury Department implemented employer withholding of income tax to more efficiently collect these funds. So that's income tax, but what about FICA? Oh, what does it even stand for anyway? FICA, or, and here it is, the Federal Insurance Contributions Act, was enacted in 1935 as a tax provision of the Social Security Act. Social Security was created by FDR during the Depression. The Social Security Act provided payments to retirees, widows, and the disabled, and FICA created the avenue to collect these payments. In 1865, during President Lyndon Johnson administration, Congress enacted Medicare under the Social Security Act to provide health insurance to people aged 65 and older regardless of income or medical history. So those tax obligations increased to include Medicare. So what are the FICA requirements? FICA requires employers to withhold three separate taxes from the wages you pay your employees. And FICA is comprised of the following taxes, a 6.2% social security tax, a 1.45% Medicare tax, that's the regular Medicare tax, and since 2013, a 0.9% Medicare surtax when the employee earns over $200,000. The law also requires you to pay the employer's portion of two of these taxes, a 6.2% Social Security tax and a 1.45% Medicare tax. Starting in 2020, the maximum earnings subject to Social Security payroll tax increased by $4,800 to a cap of $137,000, meaning over 11 million workers earning above the previous cap of $132,900 saw more of their earnings taxed. So how much do employers withhold from employee paychecks? Well, this amount is based on the information they provide on their W-4. The W-4 should be filled out on the employee's first day, and it outlines the tax exemptions they're claiming. There are a few important details for HR parties of one to know about the W-4. First, it's illegal to complete someone else's W-4. You can explain the form and provide information about the choices, but you should not influence their responses. In other words, you can provide information, but not advice. Also, it's not your responsibility to verify the accuracy of employee information, and employees can change their W-4 at any time. In addition, the IRS released a new W-4 for 2020. The new form is required for all employees starting work after January 1st of this year. So if you don't have it, get it. For more information about the new W-4, check out the blog post in the description. Employees who have filled out the W-4 in years prior to 2020 will not be required to submit a new document solely due to the new design. But as an employer, you're responsible for continuing to withhold taxes from paychecks based on previous completed W-4s on file. Outside of the tax withholding responsibilities, businesses must also report income and employment taxes through the employer's quarterly federal tax return and an annual federal unemployment tax to fund the nation's unemployment insurance system. But what about independent contractors? You do not have to withhold FICA taxes for independent contractors. They pay directly to the government agencies and you don't have to match their payments. 
The W-9 form provides independent contractor's taxpayer identification number, and the 1099 is the form used for their income. Now quickly, here's the rundown of common tax forms for small businesses. There's the Form I-9, which is Employment Eligibility Verification. This must be filled out for every person hired, as it verifies the person is eligible to work in the United States. Note, there is also a new I-9 for 2020. You can read more about it on our blog, linked in the description. Next is the Form W-2, Wage and Tax Statement. This must be filled out annually for any employee who's worked during the preceding tax year. Then there's the Form W-4, Employees Withholdings Allowance Certificate. This is the one completed by the employee and provides the information needed to calculate how much federal income tax should be withheld from each paycheck. Form 941 is the employer tax return for employers that's filed quarterly with the IRS. And Form 940 is the federal unemployment tax return, which is filed annually with the IRS. There may also be any applicable state and local required tax forms, but I've told you about the ones at the federal level. Now, what's the penalty potential? Penalties for failing to pay taxes depends on how late the payment is. This isn't a comprehensive list of tax penalties, but here are some numbers to know. If you're late one to five days, it's a 2% penalty. Six to 15 days, it's a 5%, and anything over 16 days is a 10% penalty. If the IRS sends you a notice stating you owe federal employment taxes, and you pay the deposit directly to the IRS within 10 days of the notice, you'll still be charged a 10% penalty. If you don't withhold income and FICA taxes, as you're required to do, or if you withhold the taxes but don't pay them to the IRS, the IRS is authorized to penalize you up to 100% of the taxes you owe. And if you willfully try to evade the federal government employment taxes, this is a felony, you can be punished by a fine, and you could be imprisoned for up to five years. Don't do that. Here are a few other tax considerations to know. The kind and amount of taxes you'll pay will be based on the kind of business you operate. You have the option to choose between things like an LLC and a corporation, and they differ in formation, ownership, governance, and taxes. LLCs have fewer requirements and can be taxed as C-Corps or as a pass-through entity. An LLC is owned by one or more individuals while a corporation is owned by shareholders. Through an LLC, profits of the business are taxed by passing through to the owners, with profits and losses reported on individual tax returns and not at the business level. Filing taxes is often more administratively simple for owners of an LLC. Corporations are taxed as a separate legal entity and are responsible for paying tax on their profits and tax on dividends distributed to shareholders. And if you have fewer than 100 shareholders, the next question is if you want to file as an S-Corp, which allows a business to be treated more like an LLC with pass-through taxes. Let's talk about dealing with taxes in multiple states. If your business operates in multiple states, like ours does, you'll face additional complexity around the varying state and municipal taxes of those areas. This can affect both your business taxes as well as employee tax responsibilities, so be sure to check the withholding requirements in each state where you operate. Further, if you're the owner in a pass-through entity, you must file individual income tax returns in multiple states, and this increases the complexity of filing. A final consideration is planning ahead for the inevitable employee questions or assistance you might be asked for when it comes to their personal taxes. We've experienced employees who moved from one state to another while working for us, leading to some unpaid taxes and filing issues that we had to help them work through. Now we've covered a lot here, so let's recap. As an employer, you have three categories of tax responsibilities. The first is withholding an employee's contribution for Social Security and Medicare taxes, known as FICA taxes, as well as federal and state income taxes. Now how much employers withhold from employees is based on the employee's W-4. In the case of independent contractors, you don't withhold at FICA taxes. The second responsibility is paying employer contributions for FICA taxes. The law requires you to pay the employer's portion of two of these taxes. You'll remember it's that 6.2% Social Security tax and the 1.45% Medicare tax. And the third responsibility is other business taxes. We provided a list of common taxes, but there may also be applicable state and local required tax forms, so talk to a CPA. There are penalties for failing to pay these taxes on time. So you wanna make sure you get it right. If this is something you wanna work on at your organization, here's some homework to get you started improving your employment taxes processes. Make sure you have a process for storing and retaining employees' W-4s. The best way is storing W-4s online and an HRIS platform like Bernie Portal, not in a folder on your desktop. Audit your employer contributions and other business taxes. Like I've said before, I'm not your tax professional. If I was, you'd be paying me more. So you wanna make sure you consult one. 
If you don't have a process for employee tax related questions, make one and document it in your employee handbook. For example, here's the process for, from our very own culture guide, which is what we call our employee handbook. ProLiant, our payroll provider, is responsible for tax deductions. ProLiant withholds taxes based on the information you provided in your W-4 during onboarding. If you'd like to make changes to your W-4, please contact OS, that's what we call HR, to unlock your Bernie Portal account. ProLiant has tools available within your personal account, which will allow you to estimate the amount of taxes to be withheld from your paycheck. And please use the IRS withholding calculator to determine how much should be deducted from each paycheck. There you go. So take some time to really look at how your employee is handling its, its tax-related workflow. Are there bottlenecks in the process? Can the workflow be streamlined or improved upon by going to an all-in-one HRIS like Bernie Portal? Let us know in the comments if you have any tips or tricks dealing with employer taxes. And thanks for tuning in to HR Party of One. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please tune in again next week as we tackle our next HR topic. And if you have a request for a topic, email us at hrpartyofone at bernardhealth.com. That's hrpartyofone at bernardhealth.com. For more on how you can streamline your HR operations, go to bernieportal.com. I'm Ryan McCoslin. Thanks for making this HR party of one a little less lonely. And remember, HR parties of one, your work is as strategic as you make it.